Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I've recreated my checkerboard in my single player test world just to demonstrate to you guys how all the code works. So this is the special coding description video that I promised you guys where I'd explain the code, how it works, what it does, etc, etc. Now, uh, I haven't made this thing fully functional. I haven't downloaded all the code to the individual turtles, nor have I uh, cleaned up the program around here about, like, you know, which turtle IDs are which. But that's okay, not that big a deal. I'm going to basically just kind of talk you through through the code so if the uh, turtles aren't moving around when uh, we ask them to that is why okay so long story short I just uh, you know made this a quick and dirty setup uh, I couldn't access the one on the forgecraft at the moment uh, we're doing a little maintenance on that server so while we were doing maintenance I figured it was a good time to explain to you guys the code behind the checkers game so let's take a look at it shall we so as you guys know, we can simply run the checkers command, and it'll go ahead and load up the board. Now you do have to right click on the board before it'll show up, see? And then uh, from here we can go ahead and issue the new game command. Cool. And it lays it out all the pieces on the board. Now as you recall from the multiplayer series when that happens, all the checker pieces, the turtles, uh, move from their spot on the sidelines and land right on the checkerboard where they belong. And uh, you know when we hit the quit button, it's going to send the turtles all back out to the side where they belong as well. So how does this whole game work? Well, long story short, most of the work is done by this computer right here. Uh, the turtles themselves are all kind of dumb and don't really have much knowledge. They just uh, get sent instructions here and there. Uh, the uh, master computer program over here called Checkers is what's doing all the work. So let's go through that program now. I'll show you how the Checkers program works, kind of talk through the code. Um, what I did was I downloaded the code and just rearranged some functions so it would be easier to talk through, but it's the exact same code just rearranged a little bit. So uh, there shouldn't be much of a difference between what you guys have a copy of and what I put there. Um, and then uh, I'll also show the turtle here. I uh, did pull down the uh, Checkers bot program and I'm probably going to pull down uh, the uh, go out and uh, you know the uh, go home functions as well just to demonstrate for you guys but for now let's go through what's in checkers all right so if we just edit the checkers program we'll see here that the first thing that happens is we load up the button API that's what gives us those nice little buttons that we can click on and uh, we go ahead and wrap up the uh, peripheral on top for the monitor and open the red net on the bottom that's where the modem is set up then we define a few variables now these variables are pretty important the board variable stores the information about which checker piece is where and what color it is. And it's real simple, it just stores it uh, pretty straightforward. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is uh, exit out of here, run checkers. I'm even going to set up a new game, and then I'm going to close the program so that you guys can actually see this uh, as I'm talking through it. Okay, uh, so there we go. So the board uh, is an array which actually becomes a two-dimensional array in just a minute and I'll show you that uh, and what that does is it just stores which pieces are where okay the current turn is the variable that stores whose turn it is the turtles is an array which will store uh, every turtle and where it currently exists on the board in uh, in game so that's all about the turtles and that stores the turtle ID number uh, so you know when you run over to a turtle and you type ID it tells you this is computer number 16. So that's going to get stored in that variable there so that it knows that turtle number 16 where it is. Okay, And then red remaining and black remaining are the remaining pieces. They get initialized to 12 and every time a checker piece gets jumped it's going to subtract 1 from those variables until it gets down to 0 of course. Okay, So now let's get into the actual functions and what they do. So the first set of functions I'm going to show you here is uh, the background color. Real simple, uh, it just uh, sets the background color to whatever I tell it, in this case I told it white, and it goes across the entire uh, board and just sets every square set to uh, the background color of white. So you can see I'm writing out a space here. So I'm doing a for loop, it says uh, for j is 1 to 20, well this happens to be 20 blocks across in uh, you know the computer pixels, and then uh, the next variable i is 1 to 39, that's uh, you know, I think it's actually, yeah, let's see. Yeah, uh, it's 39 across and 20 down. So that's what we're doing. We're basically looping all the way across the monitor. We're just writing out a space with a background color of white, and that gives us a nice white background. Not bad. 
Real simple. Uh, the next one is an important function called draw board. Now, I was trying to find a very intelligent and simple way to draw the board. That's the uh, black and red squares here. And what I came up with was that three across, so three spaces across, and one, two spaces down is uh, the best appearance, in my opinion. So I really liked how three spaces across, one, two, three, so you can see the X there right here is in one of the spaces. So we've got one to the left and one to the right of it. And there's only two up and down. So a three by two square. That looked the best to me. So uh, that's what I went with here. Um, now, I wanted to not have to manually draw all this out, so I came up with a little bit of a function. I'm going to talk about how that works now. It's called get color, and it determines what color the board should be given the XY coordinate. So as we know, computer craft monitors store every uh, you know pixel, if you will, as an XY position. So you know this is an XY, this is an XY, etc. And uh, wherever you click, it's that pixel. So this X is stored in one uh, position. Okay, so if I tell it the XY of that position, the get color function can tell me if that should be a black square or a red square or it doesn't exist at all on the board. Okay, and then I uh, set the cursor position to that XY coordinate and I write out a space. Um, so I'm going from uh, Y2 to Y17, which is uh, this happens to be Y2, above it is Y1 and 0. Okay, and then all the way down to Y17, which is down here. And we're also going from X3 to 26. So X3 all the way over to X26. And we just go through every space in between. So we have a you know nested for loop in there and it just goes through. Okay. So that is the draw board function. So how does get color work? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward, and I think it's slightly up above here. So I send to get color the XY position. Now, before I explain this function, you're probably wondering why would I want to be this complicated about it? Well, when I print out the uh, letters here, the X's for the checker pieces, I need to know that, you know, regardless of where I'm putting it, I need to know what the background color is. So I needed some procedural way to say, like, all right, I have to put an X here. What color should the background be? Should it be black or red? Oh. Right, that's going to be tricky. So that's what I did with the get color function. Uh, it says first we get the XY positions corner. Okay, now that get corner function is pretty interesting, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, but once I find the corner of whatever um, square I'm looking at, so right now let's assume I had uh, you know chosen this as the XY position right there where my cursor is. Okay, now in order for it to find the corner, I wanted to find the top left corner of that square, and then it's going to determine based on that what the color is. And from that corner we can determine pretty easily uh, what the XY um, the color should be. Because first off, uh, we check if the Y position of the corner mod 4 is equal to 0. The reason we do that is because I started at the number 2 up here. So this is row 2 on the XY coordinate and this is row 3. This is row 4 and 5, 6 and 7, 8 and 9. 10 and 11, 12, 13. So every other square is 4, 8, 12. And then the last one is 16. Those are all divisible by 4 without a remainder. So basically what I'm saying is if the Y position of the top left corner is divisible by 4 without a remainder, it's an invert row. And an invert row starts with red and moves on to black. Otherwise it's not an invert row and it starts with black and moves on to red. Okay, easy enough. Then I check if the X coordinate uh, mod 2 equals 0. And the reason I did that is as follows. Remember I told you that the top left corner here starts at x3 and it's three blocks across. So this is 3, 4, and 5. So 3 at the top left corner is not easily divisible by 2. So that returns and says no. So it says all right then that's going to be a black square. Okay. So the top left corner here not divisible by 2. It's a black square. Now the next one 3, 4, 5 starts with 6. 7, 8. Well, 6 is divisible by 2 nice and easily, so that's going to have to be a red square. Uh, 6, 7, 8 moves on to 9. That is not divisible by 2, so it's a black square. 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is divisible by 2, so it's a red square. So it does the same thing, right? So we determine by uh, dividing the top left x coordinate by 2, uh, that determines if it should be uh, which color here, and then we just invert those colors if uh, we're on an alternating row because the Y number is divisible by 4 uh, without a remainder. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. 
I don't know. I'm not that good at explaining code, which is why I try and avoid doing it. But a lot of people wanted me to talk through this checkers program. So I hope you're keeping up with that. Uh, so let's move on to, uh, so now that we've got that get color, let me tell you how get corner works because it's really not too bad, especially if you understand this modulus divisible by two divisible by four thing. Hopefully you do understand it because get corner is pretty much uh, uses the same thing. Get corner, okay, whatever the x, y coordinate that I click on is, okay, so let's say I clicked, you know, on the bottom right corner, worst case scenario, okay, what it does is it checks if the y that I clicked on is divisible by 2 without a remainder, okay, so let's choose, um, you know, so this was uh, y, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, if the y is 5, okay, it says is y divisible by 2 without a remainder, that's what this modulus function is. Okay, uh, if that's um, not divisible by, or if uh, y mod 2 is not 0, then y becomes y minus 1. So remember, there's only two blocks in the y, right? So it could be 4 or 5. Well, if it's 4, it's divisible by 2, and we don't do anything. If it's 5, it's not divisible by 2, so we subtract 1 and get 4. Oh, now we're at the top left corner, okay? Well, we're at the top row. Now we have to figure out the x. Well, the x's are all um, divisible by 3. Remember, I started at the x 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so we do the exact same thing with the x. We just say, hey, all right, so like assuming that we uh, now found our way up to this right corner, okay, this is 3, 4, 5. 5 is not easily divisible by 3, so we subtract 1. 4 is not easily divisible by 3, so we subtract 1. And now we've got to 3, and that's how we track down the top left corner of whatever square we clicked on. Cool. So again, all four of those functions were all written just so I could draw the board in a nice programmatic way. Uh, it figures out the top left corner of whatever x, y coordinate it is. So anywhere inside the square, it just goes and hones in on the top left corner, and then just applies a little bit of math to determine what color that should be. Uh, be it black or red. And then it goes ahead and actually draws the board with this function here where it says, hey, for every XY position that you find inside from this top left corner all the way over and down to the bottom right corner, go through every XY coordinate and figure out what color goes there and put it there. Cool. Now, on to the next function, which is load board, and it's an important one. Uh, this is the one uh, that actually defines those variables board and turtles. Now, remember I told you there were two-dimensional ways. Uh, there's arrays. There's no good way to define a two-dimensional array up front. You have to create an array, and then for every variable inside that that you want to make, you have to create another array. You guys should remember from my computer craft tutorial series that was short-lived uh, that an array uh, is, instead of just being a variable that stores one piece of data, is a variable that can store multiple pieces of data. In this case, I'm actually uh, creating eight arrays inside of each of these. Okay. And each of those eight arrays, so you can see I'm looping through it, okay, one through eight, I'm creating another array inside each of them so that they can then extensively have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of information in them. So I wind up with a two-dimensional array that is eight by eight wide. Hmm, I wonder why I would be doing that. Well, of course, because that's the exact size of the checkerboard. So I have an array that is basically lined up eight by eight, okay? So that's just preparing those two-dimensional arrays. That's all load board is doing. It's saying, hey, make uh, those one-dimensional arrays two-dimensional, okay? Now the next set of information is uh, pretty important. Uh, let's take a look at how these work. Uh, I've already shown you get corner, okay? Uh, but there's a couple things we want to get here. Um, there's two ways that I'm tracking data on here. Uh, one of them is the what I'm calling the board position. And for that, I'm using the variables A and B. This is A, B position 1, 1. And this is A, B position 2, 1. 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1. So I'm just pretending that each one of these squares is uh, just one unique thing, even though the x, y coordinate on the monitor is made up by three across and two down, a total of six coordinates per square, but each square I'm only counting as one, and I'm calling them the a, b value. So, for example, this guy here is uh, two, 
comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so this is 2, 5, and this is 2, 6, and this is 2, 7, and this is 2, 8. So I want to be able to translate those things. Okay, so I want to be able to say like, hey, given an x, y position, I want to know which square it is. Is it, you know, uh, you know, if I click right here, which square am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about 2, comma, 4. All right, that's what uh, the uh, get board position function does. It says, given an x, y position, okay, um, get the corner of the x, y. I already told you how get corner works, right? So I find the top left corner. And in this case, the top left corner is, uh, you know, for up here, it would be, 2 comma 3. Uh, this would be, uh, or yeah, it would be 3 comma 2. This would be 3, 4, 6, 4. No. This is 3 comma 2, and this is 3 comma 4, 3 comma 6, and 3 comma 8. And this is 6 comma 8, okay? So all we got to do to get the AB position of that is divide the X by 3 and the Y by 2. And that gives us uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So that gives us 2, 4. Well, that's right, 2, comma, 4. So because, because these are 3 across and 2 down, uh, we just you know, know that this is 3, 6, 9, 12. We just divide by 3, and that gives us the uh, A position. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, the Y position is divisible by 2. So it's, you know, if this is Y, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and um, y10 divided by 2 is 5, and y12 divided by 2 is 6. So that's how that works. Just divide by 3 and divide by 2, and you get the AB position. And the inverse of that is that, you know, given the AB position, you can just multiply by 3 and multiply by 2 to find the XY position of the top left corner. So if, you know, I say, hey, what's the XY coordinate of, you know, uh, board position 4, comma 5? Well, that's real easy. We multiply x times 3, and we multiply y times 3, 2, and we get it. All right, so I hope that made sense, and moving on. The draw piece function is what actually draws the little x's here and puts them in the right spot, okay? And the way this works is, first, it, uh, you have to tell it which spot on the board you want to draw a piece using the AB coordinate. So if I say I want to draw a piece on the AB coordinate um, 1, 1, that's the top left corner here, it's going to go ahead and draw an X there. And how's it going to do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it will first get the XY position on the monitor of that AB. Remember I told you a minute ago, that's real easy. We just uh, multiply by 3 and multiply by 2. Uh, then we set the background color using that get color function that I told you about before. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're drawing a black background here and not a red one. So that's what the get color function is about, why we need it. And then we make sure that we're on the top left corner. So we make sure that, you know, even though that, you know, one procedure a minute ago goes ahead and gives you the back left corner, we would just want to make sure that we're there. And then we add 1 to x. So right now we're focused on this square. We add 1 to x, and it puts it right there in the center of the x coordinate. And then it sets the cursor position to that x, y on the monitor and writes out the letter x. Cool. Draw pieces, okay. Uh, that's an important one as well. Now what draw pieces does is it draws all the pieces on the board using the draw piece function. So you can see draw piece is in here somewhere. There it is. Right there. Draw piece, A comma B. And this is just going to loop through all the A, B positions on the board. So it starts at 1, 1, moves on to 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, and just make sure all the pieces on the entire board are drawn. And that function is called every time a piece is moved. So every time a piece is moved, it has to redraw all the pieces on the board to make sure they're all shown correctly. Okay? Pretty important. Uh, but, you know, it's... Uh, it, it actually uses a function that I haven't told you guys about yet, or it uses a mechanic that I haven't told you about, and that's how the pieces are actually stored in the variable. Um, and it, you can see it right here. We've got uh, get piece. So I haven't shown you this yet, but this determines the color of the piece. And you can see here we're setting the text color um, to that variable. So it uses get piece to determine if it should draw a pink X or a gray one. So why don't I show you how set piece and get piece work? Uh, what I'm doing is, remember I told you I built a array, an eight by eight array, and I, uh, you know, made it two dimensional. So what I'm actually doing there is storing in that array the entire checkerboard in the form of a comma b, 
and in there I'm telling it what color piece exists on that square. So, for example, when I create a new game, I say, uh, you know, the board variable, 1 comma 1, has a gray piece in it, and 2 comma 1 has nothing in it, and 3 comma 1 has another gray piece, and all the way across, okay? Then when we get down to here, we say, all right, board position 2 comma 6 has a pink piece, all right, uh, position 3 comma 6 has nothing, and position 4 comma 6 has another pink piece, all right? So we just store in that variable what color piece exists, and if there's no piece there, we just store nil, which means nothing. The get piece function is real simple. It just returns the color of the piece in that A, B position. So I can say, hey, what color piece is right here? It would return nil. If I say what color piece is here, it would return pink. So it's all it cares about is the color, and that's what's get stored there, and that's how up here it knows what color to use. It calls that get piece function, and it says, hey, give me the color of that, and make that the text color of what I'm using. So when I print out my text, it writes the pink color. Cool. And that's actually used in a lot of other pieces get piece, but I wanted you to know about it. Now, get turtle and set turtle are the same way. Uh, they just store the ID of the turtle that exists there. So in this position, okay, it has the uh, turtle unique identifier number of what uh, turtle exists on this square. And when the square moves, we update that and we say, all right, this ID or this uh, AB position no longer has an ID associated with it, but this one does. All right, and so that's what that does. So the pieces are stored by color, and the turtles are stored by ID. Then, of course, we have this monster, the new game function. Not that crazy, but it basically loops through and programmatically assigns all the colors and all the turtles uh, in a for loop. So I didn't want to write this all out manually. It would be very painful. So I wrote a little for loop to do it. Um, and what it does is it goes through the board, and it alternates every position because when you start a new game, every other position has a piece in it going down the line. So, and it's only rows Y1, 2, 3, 6, 7, and 8 that have pieces in them. So that's 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8. Cool. Um, and it just tells you which colors go there. So rows 1, 2, and 3 uh, all have gray pieces. And we alternate the X's. So that's why we're doing um, I and I plus 1 and I, because it's I, I plus 1, and I. And then we jump to the next row, I, I plus 1, and I. Then we jump to the next one, I, I plus 1, and I. That's uh, the reason that we're doing a for loop, 1 through 7, and we're adding 2 every time instead of adding 1. Cool. And we do the same thing for the turtles, uh, except the turtle IDs don't go up by 2, they go up by 1, so that's why we're dividing by 2 up here. So that's a little bit complicated, but you just have to take my uh, word for it. Also, during new game, it sets the current turn equal to the pink team. So the pink team is the one that's currently supposed to move. And uh, it also sends, in a for loop, it sends a red net message to every turtle. IDs 216 through 239 were the turtles I used, but if you're building this game, you're going to have to implement your own IDs because you have to figure out the ID number of the turtles you place down on the board. It just sends the go home command. And what that, what that does is during the new game function, whenever you click new game, this is run, is uh, it, it aligns all the pieces on the board properly. It sets it to Pink's team's uh, turn, and then it tells all the turtles to go to their home position on the board. Cool. Why don't I show you the go home position real quick? So real simple, the go home position is just a go to command. You remember I've, I've used go to quite a few times in my, uh, in my series, so you should know it. It just goes to the X, Y, Z coordinates in game. So, you know, those associate with the go to position of the board. So now we might be jumping around a little bit, but the switch turn function is really easy. Is, uh, it gets called whenever a player moves, and it says if the current turn is pink, then make the current turn gray. Otherwise, make the current turn pink. Not so bad. So when a pink player moves, it switches it to gray's turn, and when a gray player moves, it switches it to pink's turn. Real easy. Uh, and then it calls the display turn function as soon as it does that. And what that does is it just writes out up here, this function up here writes, the current turn is, it sets the text color to the same color as the piece, and it writes out the word red if it's pink's turn, or if it writes out the word black if it's gray's turn. Now you notice I'm using uh, pink and gray instead of red and black. The reason for that is, you know, the uh, gray wouldn't, or the black pieces wouldn't look good against a black background. And uh, I wanted to stick with it being a slightly 
off color, so I went with pink instead of just directly red. Also, I thought they would look a little funny right next to the um, red squares. Another display function here is display remaining. Again, it sets the background color to white and the text color to green, and it sets the cursor position and shows you how many pieces are left uh, on both the red team and the black team. And that's what that's all about. Red, red remaining, so it keeps track of that in that variable I told you, and black and black remaining. Oh my guys, I fully did not expect this to happen, but uh, I'm only about halfway through the code and I'm already at about a 30 minute mark. So I'm going to wrap up the episode here and I'm going to come back next time for part two of the computer craft checkers game tutorial explanation of how the code works thing. So uh, go ahead and leave me some comments in this video. Let me know uh, how you're liking it, uh, you know, what you think and all that good stuff. And then I'll be back next episode as a part two of this special series uh, to go into the rest of it. So, so far I've shown you guys pretty much how the boards drawn on the screen and how it keeps track of some things and how it sets up the players and the pieces and everything like that and where they're stored and how they're stored. Next up, we're going to go over how the pieces are moved and how it determines what valid moves are, how it checks for the rules and all that good stuff. So it says like, you know, there's lots of stuff we have to get into still. So I'm going to cut off here and I'll be back next time. So hope you guys enjoyed part one or what became part one of the computer craft checkers tutorial series. And I'll be back next time in part two to explain the rest of the code. All right, guys, take it easy.